Our next speaker is uh, Agnieszka Bigaj van Vliet. Uh, she will be discussing sustainability challenges in construction. And she's a senior expert in the field of safety, durability, and reliability of concrete structure. She did the master's degree in Warsaw and then the PhD in Delft. And she has uh, specialized in assessment of performance structures and materials. For many years, she has worked uh, for 20 years at TNO in the Netherlands. And uh, she's a, a presidium member of the, of the FIB, member of the Technical Council, head of the Dutch delegation, and uh, also, uh, well, she has participated in a very active and very prominent way in the Model Code 2010 and now in the Model Code uh, 2020. She's uh, working very hard to develop that. So I would ask uh, Agnieszka to, to share your screen and, and, and start your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Okay. Uh, so, um, as David just said, I wanted to take you um, into the future and uh, discuss how the construction uh, industry, in particular uh, concrete structures, will uh, tend to change in the uh, coming years and what does it mean for uh, new uh, challenges for us. I, I said on my front page challenges for next generation, but actually these are challenges for present and next generation, and we should start to working on the solutions um, now. Um, let's start to work on the presentation. Okay, um, um, what I want to do is uh, to start with uh, a kind of zooming out and looking at the, the um, things that are uh, happening around us, in particular uh, the trends that are um, visible and uh, that are sensed by the construction industry, and then look how this construction industry changes. This will bring us to the issues very close to concrete structures and even more specific safety of concrete structures, because I would like to concentrate on that topic. Um, where I would like to discuss the implications of the different um, parts of the innovation and technology that we have to our disposal or will have to our disposal. Innovation with regard to building materials, circular solutions, innovations that are aimed to improve uh, cost efficiency of design and construction and the uh, digitalization that surrounds us. Um, and I hope to finish with the uh, short example of how the things um, can be done already now. Well, uh, what does happen around us? Um, uh, construction industry does not operate in isolation. Uh, we are um, experiencing all the uh, um, influences that are experienced by the society, uh, which means that um, we will feel the pressure from market and from the customers um, we will uh, have to um, feel the consequences of the increasing um, attention given to sustainability and resilience, but also uh, feel the uh, issues that happen in the society at large and how the politics react to that. Um, the, this is quite a long overview. I would like to uh, focus only a few, on a few examples because this will bring us close to the topic of today. Um, uh, let me start with this second pillar of uh, sustainability and resilience. All around the world, and it's not only um, limited to the uh, construction, concrete structures, we uh, face the uh, scarcity of uh, natural resources. Uh, they are becoming less available. There are already parts of the world that some materials became so scarce that it's difficult to get them. Um, at the same time, um, we have the uh, challenges that uh, are um, global, like the climate change and uh, energy transition challenge. Uh, the big numbers that you see here uh, coming from the uh, research done by the World Economic Forum are, of course, again, for the uh, world at large, but we can transform that for to our contribution. Don't forget that after drinking water, concrete is the second uh, produced material in the world as far as the volume is concerned. 
Uh, well, then we have again these uh, new challenges uh, that uh, we uh, haven't uh, so clearly um, understood before. Resilience. The with the climate change come also the increased importance of the resilience of society and structures to the influences such as natural disaster. Later on today, you will hear about that even more. Um, well, we could deal with these challenges, but we need to deal with them within certain constraints. We have the constraints of the financial uh, domain. We have a uh, huge demands on um, uh, um, increasing a need for uh, structures of in housing, urbanization, and infrastructure, but we also have a major burden of the existing uh, structures in infrastructure that costs more and more. Um, costs uh, in uh, maintenance and um, replacement. Uh, so uh, this is a second group of very important um, influences here underlined in a blue uh, that are dealt with the economy. Um, well, last but not least, uh, we uh, of course uh, also need to keep um, taking care of the uh, People, society requires that that we are very strict with regard to the health issues, comfort issues, and these are just few examples that will come back in uh, what we would then call sustainability. Because what is a sustainability? Sustainability is not only a taking care of our environment; it's taking care of the environment within the reality of our um, um, situation, within the reality of the economy and within the reality of the um, societal acceptance. Um, we uh, therefore say that sustainability should be uh, perceived as the combination of three pillars, the societal pillar, environmental pillar, and economic pillar. The objective of sustainability is met when we meet this uh, quite often competing um, requirements of this three pillar, taking care of the structures, uh, that provides the highest quality and safety for the society, take care of the environment uh, and keeping it uh, at this uh, level that we want to pass to the future generation, but also being able to pay for the costs of this ambition. Well, for concrete structures, we are fully confident and we can reach this uh, objective, but uh, the question is uh, how to do it. Well, um, things are happening very fast. Uh, what we're now facing is the kind of sustainability revolution, as it says, uh, one of the um, huge revolutions that our um, civilization uh, has faced, but also one of these who are happening uh, fastest. Um, and we see the effect of that already on the um, arena of the politics. Uh, the shift to sustainable structure happens actually now. Um, in Europe, just as an inspiration to other parts of the world, um, I um, included that what we are having here. The Green Deal has been signed in Europe that is, has a very ambitious um, uh, goal of um, challenge, changing the challenge into opportunity and uh, aims at uh, improving the um, climate uh, um, uh, uh, aspects of the environmental uh, impact, aims at reduction of the um, CO2 emission and aims at, at the uh, more uh, um, uh, proper and um, um, future-oriented use of the natural resources. These are just few of the aspects of the uh, Green Deal. How does that translate into uh, uh, the situation in the construction industry? Well, the construction industry uh, is uh, aware of that situation and reacts. There are different um, things happening on different level, on company level, sectoral level, and government level. And again, let's focus on the few that I will be discussing later on, uh, in particular with regard to its impact on um, concrete structures. Um, we have uh, noticed a very strong improvement of the technology with regard to new materials, with regard to tools that are to our disposal, uh, tools that we are using for design and uh, also equipment that we are using in the construction process. 
um, we are aware of the fact that the um, life cycle perspective became far more important, both in design, but also during the use of the structures. And we are also aware of the fact that uh, we need to um, do work within the constraints of the codes of the harmonization. It means that uh, we are also looking at the uh, needs and uh, requirements of the uh, standards. This is important uh, uh, notion considering FIB, just like Tor Ole said, is also working on the model code for concrete structures, the code that uh, should uh, meant, uh, provide the uh, basis for um, uh, all these aspects. Um, well, we have huge ambitions, but can we do it? I mean, like, it's always good to uh, understand what we are aiming at. Um, uh, and to illustrate that, I took this example of the European Green Deal, which is very uh, specific in terms of the aims. 50% uh, CO2 emission, uh, emission reduction by 2030, which means in 10 years. 50% reduction of the use of primary resources. Well, this is for the whole industry, it's, uh, for the, let's say for whole uh, of our activities, not only industrial activities. In the Netherlands, we have translated that into particular goals for the concrete industry. And uh, this is something that uh, could be, again, a kind of reference for how big this ambition is. Um, Netherlands will go for 50% CO2 emission reduction only from the concrete construction sector by 2030 with a minimum target of 30% and to for 100% reuse of construction and demolition waste. Well, is this possible at all? I think this is a good question to, uh, to ask. And uh, when you look at the diagram on the right hand side, it, um, it illustrates the magnitude of this challenge. Um, uh, what it says is that at this moment, we produce in Netherlands only 22 million ton of the construction of demolition waste, but, our, but we are using 33 million uh, ton of the new concrete. So it, it seems possible we are using more than we are uh, throwing away. We could reuse that. What are we doing at this moment? We are only reducing this percentage that is indicated with this red square. So it's hardly noticeable on the on the large scale. What about CO2 reduction? Um, uh, well, the most effective way of reducing CO2 um, uh, when we are talking about the uh, construction, apart from the production process, is uh, the one which will follow from the um, uh, replacement of uh, cement, the huge uh, producer of the CO2 uh, from the concrete industry. Um, in the Netherlands, we have uh, already applied certain strategies based on the replacement of cement by blast furnace slag and fly ash. And again, uh, although we are doing very well comparing to other parts of the world, it's still far beyond what we would need to do if we want to meet this uh, huge um, ambition scale. Well, what can we do? What can we do at all with concrete structures to uh, um, perform this shift to sustainable uh, concrete uh, um, and build environment? Well, being inspired by this diagram from the circular economy, um, I try to make it uh, tangible for concrete structures. What is at our disposal? Well, we can definitely rely on the circularity principle. Uh, in that way, the renewable resources should be managed in such a way that uh, we are uh, returning them back into the cycle, not downscaling, but upscaling if possible, or at least keeping at the same level of use. For the non-renewable resources, we should uh, do our best to prolong their life cycle and, uh, if necessary, manage their disposal. Well, for concrete structures, um, we have different strategies that follow from that principle. We have a strategy that is based on renovation. It's very relevant for existing structures, keeping them at use as long as possible and sensible, also from the economic point of view, and um, be uh, uh, work when necessary on the service life extension. This is this technology renovate that I will not discuss anymore during my presentation because I think that's a topic of its, of its own, what to do with existing structures. Then we have an, a 
few other strategies that are based on the concept of uh, reclaim, reuse. Uh, this is the strategy based on reuse of construction elements. We can reclaim them from the existing structures and reuse um, instead of prefabricating new elements. We have a strategy that is called here recycle, which is based on recovery and reuse of aggregates and cementitious binders from construction and demolition waste. And again, based on that uh, type of uh, new constituents for concrete, we can make concrete production, the new concrete production. And there is also a strategy that I called reinvent, uh, which is um, um, uh, related to um, inventing, uh, producing alternative concrete, uh, concrete constituents, for instance, alternative binders. All that uh, would come from the other strong streams of the um, waste that are at this moment not being effectively used. Well, there is also one other strategy that I will also want to say something about today. And this is the strategy rethink. Within the old knowledge that we already have, we can make a, a new creative approach to design, construction, and maintenance by which we will uh, again improve sustainability of our structures. But let's first start with these three strategies that are based on reuse and uh, recovery and um, uh, new materials um, uh, directed. Recycle, reuse, and reinvent. Um, reuse of aggregates and binders, reuse of uh, concrete elements from existing structures, and replacing cement with alternative binders and alternative fillers from the new residual waste streams. Um, there are, uh, these are the um, directions in the uh, sustainable concrete structures that strongly rely on innovation. Well, innovation in building materials, we have seen it and we uh, see it also for concrete materials. These are very important um, uh, uh, part of the research uh, efforts that are going into creating smart materials, self-healing materials, um, materials that are uh, um, uh, dedicated to certain particular types of application. In the uh, field of concrete, uh, we have seen a uh, rapid development of this kind of uh, uh, innovation in the recent years. When, while in the past uh, we had uh, long periods that we were uh, working with the, new, uh, with the materials uh, that were uh, well um, um, uh, known, and uh, used for a long time. In the recent years, you see it, we have an increased uh, amount of innovation, um, uh, both for reinforced or precast concrete, uh, new additions, as, uh, one that found their way for the application very fast, like self-levering concrete or fiber reinforced concrete, and one that are still under development. And uh, we can do even more than that if we want to um, have the, uh, take out and most possible from the innovation, innovation on uh, with regard to um, types of concrete. Um, we have the special performance concrete. They, beat, uh, they offer us an, uh, per, uh, great possibilities with regard to making structures uh, that will use the material to its maximum. Uh, we have uh, high performance materials with extreme strength, but also increased ductility. We have uh, materials that are uh, self-healing, uh, that has also an effect on the performance of uh, structures at large. But we have also something uh, completely new, uh, carbon capture materials. Uh, this uh, kind of materials can open a new possibilities for using concrete structures, uh, not only as the uh, producer of the uh, CO2, but also as the uh, more effective uh, means of uh, um, capturing that uh, into the uh, built environment. And uh, on the right hand side, you see the beautiful picture, pictures of what we can do with structures here, uh, the uh, high, ultra high performance concrete used as an architectural concrete and, the, and this new part of the innovation. Well, I was talking about recycle and reuse as a concept, but of course also this technology is developing very fast. Um, we have possibilities by uh, so-called weight recycling technique to uh, separate different fractures from the construction and demolition waste 
this moment, this technology is, uh, although developing very fast, is most reliable to uh, produce the coarse aggregate for concrete. Um, uh, you see it uh, on the pictures taken in one of the um, uh, Dutch uh, recycling um, uh, factory. And we can see that here we can uh, have the different levels of cleanness and separation. The challenge is uh, then to um, design concrete mixes that will be um, uh, sufficiently durable and will meet other performance requirements uh, for use in uh, concrete structures. So design of the composition of such uh, uh, materials is uh, something that we have to uh, understand. And we again want to do that without increasing the cement content and if possible with uh, lowering that uh, uh, below that of the traditional um, solutions. Uh, by doing so, we will be benefiting, we will be um, reaching the objective of um, um, reducing the use of primary resources, but also reducing the CO2 emission. We have also other techniques, uh, the dry techniques, which are um, uh, able to um, also separate uh, different fractions, fine and ultra fine fractions. Well, this is a very interesting um, part of the innovation because this could allow us to use ultra fine fractions as the replacement of cement and by that again benefited the uh, objective of uh, reducing CO2 emission in the new uh, um, concrete by new concrete structures. Well, reclaimed elements, um, we don't do that much yet. It has partly to do with the technology that we have used in the past for uh, construction. So uh, monolith structures are for obvious reasons uh, more difficult to uh, um, um, deconstruct than uh, uh, modular structures, but still it's not impossible. Then again, there are challenges connected to that. When we are um, aiming at reuse of construction elements, we should be very well aware of the fact that we must be able to, with um, required accuracy, to assess their re residual road bearing capacity and residual durability, uh, because otherwise uh, we will not uh, know the unknowns in the design will be uh, so huge that it would not be um, uh, practical to uh, design with this kind of. Um, elements. Though this is not impossible, we can uh, uh, have models and approaches based on uh, models and measurements to um, uh, assess both load bearing capacity and durability of existing structures. Well, one of the uh, uh, strategies, so-called by me reinvent strategy was um, uh, dedicated to development of alternative binders. Alternative binders that would uh, not uh, use um, uh, cement uh, uh, hydraulic binders, but uh, alternatives, for instance, geopolymers, and uh, but also alkali activated binders. This kind of innovation is uh, very promising. Um, uh, by that, we would be also able to mobilize the waste materials that are at this moment quite often um, uh, downcycled or even disposed in landfill. Uh, so if we were able to um, um, design a concrete mix at the desired performance uh, and uh, um, understand the behavior of such a concrete in a structural application, that we can effectively apply this kind of um, uh, new binders in the structural uh, concrete as well. Uh, so, um, uh, well, now a few words about this uh, others, uh, other options, uh, the rethink strategy. Um, with the rethink strategy, we, uh, I was thinking about uh, applying different construction concepts. Uh, prefabrication of demountable structures, they can still be used, uh, use the traditional concrete by, by um, having different perspective at uh, looking at the life cycle performance, we still have rich and a great gain both with regard to um, uh, all aspects of sustainability, reduce environmental impact, optimize uh, uh, the uh, costs uh, that are needed for that, and satisfy the needs of uh, users for the safety and comfort. Um, the same uh, can be done using uh, alter, uh, high performance materials, for instance, uh, ultra high performance concrete or uh, fiber reinforced uh, uh, polymer reinforced concrete. Uh, we have also um, a development going on with regard to fabrication technology and not to forget 
we can benefit from the fact that uh, with the increase of the um, sensor uh, development and digital technologies, we can also assess new information. Well, a short overview of these aspects that improve this efficiency of design of and construction. Um, uh, parametric design, uh, a very effective way uh, to uh, optimize the design uh, in such a way that we can um, reduce the volume of the material being um, uh, used. And this has a straightforward effect of the all aspects of uh, sustainability. The effort spent uh, in the design will pay back in uh, the benefits uh, of the uh, in terms of sustainability pillars. A very interesting option is also prefabrication and uh, modelization standardization. Um, this results in the higher quality, lower tolerances, um, uh, so fewer tolerance problems, and um, lower construction costs are very important also when we aim at um, achieving sustainability, as I just said, we need to um, uh, be able to pay the costs of that. And uh, modular constructions are also um, a very interesting option if we want to talk in the future about uh, circularity based on reuse of the elements. Um, and uh, the, the one mentioned on the lowest level, automated construction and new construction technology, for instance, uh, 3D uh, fabrication. Um, again, uh, they can benefit uh, us in the sense of improving the cost efficiency of the production and uh, improving the quality. Um, well, all of them have an objective of creating the structures that are um, uh, being utilized to the maximum. Well, as you will uh, hear in the minute from me, this is also something uh, as an, uh, that we need to consider when we are designing. Um, uh, the traditional structures have relatively large safety margins, hidden safeties. The optimized structures were for, uh, um, will not have that kind of margins anymore. So we must be very um, uh, aware of that when doing the design, knowing that our uh, that uh, all the um, deficiencies in the design will not be compensated uh, anymore by what we have now, this hidden safety um, um, perspective. So um, let's go to um, um, structural safety. Um, after this maybe a bit long introduction, uh, I want to go to the topic of my presentation, which is the safety of the structures. Um, uh, what do we need to understand in order to be designed, to be able to design safe concrete structures uh, uh, and using this kind of innovation and possibilities? Um, uh, first of all, uh, we have to be uh, able to assess the uh, suitability of the solutions for uh, concrete structures. Uh, next, we must be able to model structural performance uh, for uh, situations in which we are using these new materials or reclaimed elements in the new structures. Um, uh, next, uh, essential, our safety uh, philosophy and verification framework must take into consideration this new situation. The, um, this uh, new materials are different than traditional materials, but still we need to meet the same requirements with regard to structural safety. Uh, we, there, were, there are no compromises in that. Um, we have to understand to which extent this uh, verification framework needs to be adjusted or, uh, and how it can be used to uh, perform design with these new solutions. Um, maybe something less related to uh, structural safety, but nevertheless essential for sustainability. Our cost uh, and environmental impact um, assessment methods must be also capable and uh, do just at, to the benefits of using this kind of innovation. As this moment we see, for instance, that CO2 emission is being um, um, usually taking uh, into consideration when calculating environmental impact, but there are very few methods that uh, do just at the fact that uh, with concrete structures, we can also reduce the use of primary resources. This is again, a very essential objective for when we are talking about um, limiting impact of the structures on the environment. And uh, last but not least, uh, if we build a structure, we will uh, have to, um, um, Leave with the structure, the service uh, period of the structure requires also uh, um, approaches uh, based on the knowledge. 
um, with their new solutions, um, we have to understand how to perform maintenance. Um, is the aging of structures, is the demand on maintenance comparable with the existing structures or do we need to um, adjust our approaches there as well? And here um, the sideline to which extent can we also benefit during the service period from the information that we can assess from um, condition uh, monitoring um, or other type of uh, inspections. Well, this was the topic design with new challenges. So now let's go to um, um, elaborating on that. Design with new challenges is also design with new uncertainties. Um, I was talking about the material innovation uh, or the component replacement. Well, um, everything that we understand and we use in our design nowadays is based on understanding the uncertainties that are coming from the use of traditional solutions and they are coming from the use of models that describe the performance of the traditional solutions. Now, you must realize that when we are changing that, that we are not working anymore within the well uh, uh, known to us traditional uh, solutions domain, we must reassess the aspect of uncertainties. And um, uh, well, we know that material and structural behavior is always bound with uncertainties. So, um, uh, uh, um, uh, and that, that lack of understanding also leads to increase of the uncertainties. This example in the diagrams shows something quite straightforward. This is about the change in the uncertainties with regard to concrete strength, but C is just an illustration. The same will uh, have to apply uh, applies also to uncertainty in modeling of certain aspects of behavior, for instance, shear resistance or bending resistance or durability of structures. There is always a certain, uh, uh, there is always a band of uncertainty that comes partly from the heterogeneity of the materials, partly also from the aspects that are related to our approaches. When we model, we schematize the reality and every schematization um, is just an approximation and approximations uh, have uncertainties. So when we have a traditional solution and for that we know how to design concrete, we know how to derive the for instance, characteristic of design strength of concrete. When we are going into new material, the um, uncertainty of the novel solution may be completely different. If the heterogeneity of the material is different, um, this may um, result in the uh, um, different um, uh, values, uh, despite the same uh, value of the mean concrete strength of the characteristic concrete strength. So again, understanding what is the amount of the uncertainty, both re with regard to parameters uh, characterizing the materials, but also with regard to the models that we are using, is the must have before we go into structural design. These uncertainties determine the values of, for instance, partial factors. They also determine in full probabilistic approaches, the probabilistic models that we are using for um, reliability analysis. Well, it's often like that, that when the door closes, the window opens. So we have possibilities to deal with that. We have information. We have sources of information that we can use to improve our understanding of uncertainties. So we can design with new information. We can assess the information about the distribution of properties of the materials. We can calibrate our models to assess the modeling uncertainty. And again, based, based on that, we can reduce a part of the uncertainty, or at least we can quantify better the uncertainty with regard to um, this novel solutions. And uh, well, here we are very well um, assisted by the um, of, uh, rapidly developing um, uh, technology. Digitalization provides us the very effective tools to um, evaluate data and uh, involve data in evaluation of uncertainties. Um, uh, well, Another challenge that we have to um, face when um, talking about safety of uh, sustainable structures based on novel solutions is um, uh, design with new behavior. Um, uh, well, we can approach that in different ways. We can attempt to um, have a very advanced approach in modeling of the behavior of concrete structures based on new solutions. 
These examples illustrate the multi-scale modeling capabilities where we are looking uh, at different um, levels, for instance, the uh, uh, coral packing modeling at the um, um, performance of the concrete as a material, and then with the uh, um, element analysis at the uh, behavior of structures. Um, well, this uh, advanced simulations uh, can help us to explore uh, the behavior of structures to uh, some extent. Well, we can even go further. We can say that um, knowing that there are uncertainties on our behavior, when we perform the design, we can also uh, make use of a very advanced approach to uh, reliability analysis, define the um, uh, probabilistic models for describing the uh, properties of the material, and uh, apply that in modeling the resistance, apply similar approaches to uh, define probabilistic models for actions, and perform the full probabilistic analysis with the probabilistic techniques to assess the uh, reliability of the design. Well, this um, uh, example here shows uh, such an exercise that have been uh, done by colleagues from my um, um, department where we have performed the full probabilistic analysis of structural safety. Well, the question is only do we have to do that or shall we do that in the regular design or is it only for the particular uh, situations or does it have another purpose? Um, uh, for that, for this one of you who uh, know Model Code 2010 and Model Code 2020 will um, apply this approach again, we have the uh, uh, possibility of applying level of approximation. Um, with design, we have to deal with uh, uncertainties and behavior modeling, but we also have the flexibility in choosing at which level of refinement we want to deal with both of that aspect. We can apply the um, um, behavior models of, with different level of accuracy and we have applied we can apply different approaches to the reliability um, analysis by full probabilistic um, approaches as I just showed uh, but but also the very well calibrated semi probabilistic approaches uh, provide the uh, good engineering um, tools um, uh, the choice depends on the situation um, as uh, you probably uh, will know, we can uh, and we attempt to apply full probabilistic um, approaches in combination with, for instance, nonlinear finite element models in um, cases where we need to assess the behavior of the existing structures. Well, every uh, um, piece of um, uh, that we can mobilize matters because otherwise structures will declare to be unsafe for use. In the design, we are often tending to apply semi-probabilistic approaches and less um, um, uh, advanced models for the behavior. Uh, well, it depends on the effort and time that we want to devote to analysis and how that is balanced with the uh, cost of the uh, design at a particular stage of the design. So again, these tools differ per situation. The choice is the choice of the engineer. It's important to know that we have these possibilities and that we are able to uh, choose uh, the one that fits the best in the, in the situation. Um, as you may see, for the preliminary design, it's sufficient to use the lower accuracy um, approach, while in the um, design for specific cases, we may rely on far more advanced um, uh, approaches, which may be, for instance, case in the um, uh, very advanced uh, sustainable structures design. Well, I would like to complete my presentation with uh, showing something that is maybe even more future oriented. And this is a back to the, uh, what I was uh, showing in the beginning, um, uh, sustainability uh, as a, a concept with, this, with its three pillars and three um, competing uh, objectives. Um, uh, when we do at this moment design, we quite often compare different scenarios um, and choose the scenario that meets the best, the objectives that we have defined uh, uh, from the different pillars environmental pillar, economic pillar, and um, uh, pillar of uh, um, so social requirements to which we also count the structural safety. Well, with the increasing um, uh, abilities to model, 
we can also perform multi-objective design and multi-objective optimization of the design. Um, uh, this is a nice concept when we want to explore different alternatives and uh, when we want to make a choice to which degree to uh, demolish our structures, what will pay back the best in the case of uh, design of new structures based on the existing stock, stock of the materials. Um, um, this research has been conducted at uh, TNO. Um, uh, where we have tried and, uh, and actually succeeded in developing an uh, algorithm for performing multi-objective optimization of the design by which uh, the structural solution is uh, um, um, evaluated uh, within the constraints of the requirements but uh, um, meeting the, uh, aiming at meeting the requirements of the three pillars of sustainability. To do that, we need to define the objective functions for each of the uh, aspects of the, so the function that describes impacts, functions that describe structural performance. Um, then we do uh, the uh, algorithmic um, um, uh, um, procedure, we apply algorithmic procedures to um, produce the optimal um, alternatives, and then we can do the um, uh, final step, which is the decision making. Um, how does that work in the particular case? Here we tried to optimize the design of the floor made of um, uh, recycled uh, concrete based on the recycled aggregate and, and alternative binders, where the design parameters were the parameters um, characterizing material and geometry of the solution. And um, what we can produce then is what is so-called Pareto front, the um, combination of uh, or the um, identification of all design alternatives that uh, are uh, such that one, none of the pillars can be improved anymore without compromising another pillar. Um, we can then quantify the impact per each of the pillars of sustainability. What we also did is to compare this kind of optimized solutions with the traditional solutions, which is this orange point somewhere here. You see that it's far away from the front on which the optimal solutions uh, lie. And then we can select the solution out of the range of the solution that meets the best, the particular requirements of the customer, because once again, sustainability is balancing different uh, requirements. And in that sense, the um, uh, uh, owners or customers, the, the one who commissioned the structures, have their own priorities how to value certain aspects of sustainability. Um, well, then uh, if we do that, if we apply all the knowledge that we have and we uh, are able to do a lot, then we can be sure that uh, from the concrete structures, we will have a substantial contribution to uh, what has been described as the agenda of the sustainable development and uh, endorsed by the United Nations. This is important for the future of, uh, of the, uh, the humankind, but it's also important for the growth of our sector and our knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. Very detailed and very interesting presentations. We have um, several questions, and I will um, I will try to to uh, put them in in groups, yeah? so you can uh, maybe answer. We can let's allow like five minutes for that. If not, we'll do we'll answer them at the end because otherwise we're, we're a little bit late. And, and and I have several questions from Tamara Jaini Chidiak. And she says, I'm going to read uh, some of them. When you mean construction reliability, do you also include model codes that can predict the service life of the, of the construction material? Yes, absolutely. Uh, when we are talking about uh, structural safety, we are talking about durable structural safety. So the uh, um, degradation of the material uh, is uh, an uh, essential aspect. Another thing is that when we do design, uh, we also take into consideration the, the um, service life period. Uh, this is uh, something very essential. We set the requirements for safety in perspective of the time. So uh, the, the time domain is uh, um, explicitly 
considered when we are doing uh, the design for structural safety. Okay, we have one other here. Oh, one of the questions that always always raises is that can alternative binders that have lower carbon footprint be reliable? Is it possible one day to complete shift to alternative binders by making sure of the safety application? And if so, how to prove this reliability? I keep going. Given that we don't have long-term durability data of the alternative binders as compared to the traditional port non cement, what is the main key durability aspect we should find out when we are studying about these alternative binders that can help us to safely predict performance in the long term, example, 50 year times? Uh, yes, okay, this is a very good question and I hope uh, that I touched it uh, to some extent in my presentation. Uncertainty about performance of binders and performance of the material will always be a burden in the design. So if, as long as we will not be able to quantify or if the quantification of the under, uh, uh, um, uh, uncertainty will um, lead to the conclusion that it's huge, this kind of the materials will not be uh, um, uh, used to its most uh, potential. Uh, so uh, what we must do, and there is the way through the research, is to uh, be able either to, um, uh, well, first of all, to be able to quantify the uncertainty. For that, we need to have um, um, uh, tools. Part of the tools is testing. There, there is a lot of research done of defining the test methods for uh, binders and uh, uh, concrete with alternative binders. Um, uh, so that by assessing information, we will be able to, uh, uh, as I say, quantify uncertainty. Um, uh, we will always need to do that. Actually, we also do that for traditional solutions. This is not that the traditional solutions do not have uncertainty, only we are better uh, in quantifying that. Mm -hmm. We will also need to understand what is the impact of this kind of material of structural behavior. This is not only the matter of uh, um, uncertainty on the material behavior, but it's also a matter of understanding what is the effect of this kind of materials, uh, not only alternative binders, but alternative concrete in general, on application and uncertainty of our models. We have also the modeling uncertainty. Uh, this, is, uh, this is part of the puzzle. Okay, let's go to another, and then we, we go to the next presentation, and some of them will go at the end, maybe, okay? Another question is, what are the use or what are the benefits for sensor development? And then she says, do you have guide books to the mention and modeling of structural performance, including durability, as well as to the mention approach to predictive maintenance of the new constructions with new concrete mixes and reuse elements, including performance monitoring and use of condition data in decision making? Yes. Um, uh, well, uh, condition monitoring and use of monitoring uh, for um, uh, structures is an, uh, uh, something that is uh, that has a lot of attention. We have an, uh, um, uh, what we are actually very much um, focusing on is application of uh, monitoring techniques for um, um, condition control in existing structures. And then evidently we can use this information in uh, uh, for the um, uh, actualization of the performance level. And from that, we can make a prediction of the development of the condition in the future. So by that, we are very strongly reducing uncertainty with regard to the residual service lives uh, of structures. Examples uh, can be found in, uh, in literature, and I will be happy to, uh, to after the meeting, if somebody has this kind of question, please uh, let me know. They are, they are, they are also, I think they produced a very good bulletin about using of monitoring for, uh, for structures. There is also a um, uh, work going on at this moment of implementation of the regulations for um, monitoring of structures in the code for existing structures. Uh, we will be working on that in Monaco 2020 as well. Um, if we talk about use of monitoring um, as a design strategy, uh, it is also possible, this is being done for instance for steel structures that we designed for monitoring, by that we can take part of the uncertainty, uh, part of the risk can be covered by the fact that the structure will be monitored so the, the design can be less conservative. Um, uh, this is back to this principles of how do we deal with risks 
in our safety philosophy. Okay. Um, okay, we have some good presentations also here and, and a request if we are going to organize uh, workshop for probabilistic modeling or for durability assessment in the future. And this is a good idea that we may do that. I, I, I definitely I, I, agree with that. I have a couple of questions here. Uh, one is from Vladislav Shestokov. Uh, it's more for Agnieszka. Saying building and designing sustainable structure leads to increased construction costs and therefore a possible decrease in the profit of investors. Are investors ready to invest in sustainability? Their refusal or unwillingness is also one of the factors that can slow down the implementation of building sustainability structures. What is your opinion on this? And what are the ways to persuade investors to invest in sustainability? Uh, well, this is uh, this is a question that I think is bothering everybody. Uh, the uh, the solutions uh, come with the um, expenses, and sustainability is in fact also covering that aspect. I mean, sustainability, as I said, there are competing objectives of environmental protection, but also of the um, economic uh, perspective. Um, we see that there is a lot of influence from the society that can be enforced by the uh, politics. So the shift towards certain solutions uh, comes uh, with the pressure from the um, uh, society that can be uh, felt uh, by that. Um, we notice also that if they are uh, leading, um, uh, launching customers that can be governments, do, who promote certain solutions or who demands, demand certain solutions, this immediately has an impact on the, um, what is being offered. We have observed that, that uh, if the um, um, governmental uh, parties or the public parties decide to have a pilot project in which they uh, request this kind of solution, the market is very well able to provide a range of solutions. I think this is, a, this is the process that will probably take time. Uh, well, cost will be essential. And as long as the uh, companies need to make profit, they will also consider that. Yes. I think, David, you could probably continue on that from your uh, an area, well, from your perspective of prefabrication and based on your experience. I have some questions on prefabrication, so I will go on them. I have one from Venkatarama Hegadi. Uh, from India, as you're talking on sustainability right now, Dr. Agnieszka, in India and in, on Chennai coast, we are expecting Cyclone Niva to hit land in another three hours, maybe two hours now. The increasing intensity is said to be a byproduct of climate change. Sustainable concrete construction is in the order of the day in the interest of posterity. So it's a little comment on, on this. And he has another comment that may be also interesting to answer. In view of the so much secondary cementitious material replacing the OPC, do you think that there is a need to change 28 days strength as characteristic strength? Uh, I think that we are, uh, well, maybe to the second question, 28 strength as characteristic strength. I think when we are talking about performance-based concrete, not only for this type of concrete, we are um, uh, releasing certain requirements that were traditionally uh, used for the traditional solutions, such as 28 uh, days strength, that was representing a certain property of material, of certain performance of the material, with the materials having completely different um, development type for strength. Um, uh, this is not anymore the only requirement. We can, we can go with the performance-based approach. Mm -hmm. I have another one about concrete. I will give it to you now, and then I will go to a couple of precast uh, uh, questions from Ivan Markovic. Can we expect that the model code 2020 will introduce some flexibility regarding the reduction of the minimal cement content in concrete, as well as the increase of the minimum water cement ratio? For instance, in Switzerland, we cannot make concrete with less than 300 kilos of cement per cubic meter for traffic infrastructure. Although it's possible to have same properties with for example, 250. Um, I think in the, in the model code 2020, we are not actually yet saying uh, too much about the concrete composition. As you may know, we also intend to continue work with the model code on standardization. And there is an ambition of developing a code that could be com uh, compared to the uh, uh, European standard 265 for concrete. So the material standard. 
um, and uh, these issues will be treated there. So for the time being, um, uh, not yet in the model code, although we will um, try to say something about application of alternative concrete composition uh, in general. Uh, but the work is going on. There is the whole group and the commission uh, working on the material. Uh, maybe this is also a good topic for discussion for one of the uh, webinars in the future. Yeah, maybe. Thank you so much, Anieska.